And welcome to the John Bishop Show. Happy New Year, everybody. We've got a brilliant show for you, but first of all, let me bring on my guest. The first guest is the only person in British music history to have topped the charts as a solo artist, as a part of a duet, as part of a quintet, and as part of a quartet. Yes, she has sold millions of records. She's also a Liverpool fan. Please welcome on stage, Mel C. <laughs> My next guest is making massive strides as a comedian, as a writer, as an actor. He's been nominated for a BAFTA twice, he's making waves over in the States, and he's come all the way from Coventry for us. Please welcome <laughs> Goz Khan. <laughs> So this is the first week of January 2023. I'm like everybody else, I started this new year full of good intentions. I was going to do dry January. And for a lot of people, it's going to be a big challenge for them because this is the first Saturday of that January. I'll be honest with you, I found that the month was dragging, so I gave up by Wednesday. <laughs> And it wasn't my fault, it's because I'm like a lot of men in this country. I discovered something during lockdown that has changed my relationship with alcohol. I discovered rosé wine. <laughs> it's been a secret that's been hidden from straight men for a long, long time. <laughs> and I found it during lockdown, and it has changed my life. I mean, there is no way that as a straight man at a wedding, if someone had said, do you want a rosé? I'd have said, don't be stupid, I'll have a lager. I'm not going to have a rosé, it's not really a drink. But, oh, my God, when you taste it, it's there. I mean, you can't let go of it. There's a rosé wine called Whispering Angel. <laughs> I mean, Whispering Angel. That can't be wrong to drink that, surely. <laughs> it's like God saying to you, go on. <laughs> Go on, have a little drink. <laughs> Put a bit of ice in, it'll help. <laughs> There's a lot of talk this week that Rishi Sunak has been absent. Nobody's seen him over the Christmas period. I know why. Cos I can't be the only person in the country to think he looks like an elf. <laughs> no, seriously. Have a look at this. <laughs> So that's why no one saw him over Christmas. He was busy. So then he finished Christmas, he came out and he made a landmark speech on Tuesday about his plans for the future. And he made loads of suggestions about what he was going to do. One is that he's made a promise to stop the small boats. Rishi, you can't stop the small boats. They are the only thing that's moving at the moment. <laughs> So another thing that Rishi Sunak did this week is that he made an announcement that he was going to extend how long people have to lay maths for for an extra two years so that everybody is going to have to take maths lessons compulsory until the age of 18, which is bonkers. I mean, Keir Starmer had a real golden opportunity because he was making an announcement the next day about what Labour were going to do. What Keir Starmer should have said is, look, Rishi, None of us need to learn maths. None of us have needed to learn maths since the 1980s when someone invented the calculator. <laughs> In the 80s, we were all in school, you got a calculator out. The first thing that we did is we all learned to write boobs on it, which is brilliant. <laughs> now you don't even need a calculator because everyone's got a smartphone, so you just have to talk to it. Although, to be honest, if you say the word boobs, a different thing happens. <laughs> And the thing that gets me is that what Rishi Sunak wanted to do is to educate the youth for the betterment of the future. And he picked teaching maths for an extra two years as the way to do it. He could have done a million things. We've got an obesity epidemic. He could have said, you're going to do more PE for two years. We've got an issue with children. Don't look at anything except the phone. He could have said, we're going to teach you the arts for two years so you learn to dance or sing or act or express yourself. And instead, he said, what we're going to do for the next two years is make you count more. <laughs> this shows you that this country is a country that's now run by a prefect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got three, haven't I? 
Yeah. 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 So listen, this is the first weekend after the Christmas period. How was it for you both? What did you just get up to? Oh, you know what? I had a really traditional Christmas. It was lovely, it was quiet, because I had a busy 22. So it was nice to see family. Because you know what it's like, you're working, you're busy, there's lots of people you don't get enough time to see. When you're in a band like the Spice Girls, what happens over Christmas to you? Do you buy each other presents or is all those days gone? No, we do, actually. Um, I got some gorgeous pyjamas from Emma. That's nice. That was cool. Some nice Christmas pyjamas, because Emma is Miss Christmas Spice. Yeah. And what else did I got? I got a lovely hamper from Jerry. And I haven't got mails yet, but I'm going to blame that on the post. What about you, Gus? What did you get up to? Yeah, I mean, we got four kids, so it's always busy. And then on New Year's Eve, I thought I was having a heart attack. On New yeah. Year's Eve, you thought you were having a heart attack? Yeah, it was like 11.59, I remember specifically, and the fireworks <laughs> started going off, and my, my whiskers was like, you're just a big puss. I said, nah, something funny's going on in my chest. I can feel it beating. I am a bit of a hypochondriac. I do get scared. You know, like, you go on the internet, and then there's all those articles in the corner, the clickbait, and it's like, Steve thought he needed a difficult shit. <laughs> Turned out to be stage four cancer, and I'm like, oh, I've needed a difficult shit for five Don't days, man. I've got all kinds of problems. I've got that. So my heart started beating really quick, yeah? And so I got the blood pressure monitor out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where's the blood pressure monitor come from? Is it's... that a Christmas present or something? <laughs> <laughs> Who has a blood pressure monitor? I'm fat, so there's always a blood pressure monitor <laughs> kicking around the house. I took it out, and I didn't know the rules, like, you meant to sit down and rest for five minutes and take three readings. So when I tested it, it was high, OK? Mm -hmm. I went to that same website that told me Craig was dying from the difficult shit, and it says, you're finished. So now I'm panicking. <laughs> So what I proceeded to do is, everyone's trying to calm me down, that the blood pressure's all right. And so I said, look, man, I'm going to die. This is my last night. And so the rest of my family's trying to calm me down. They said, we'll do our blood pressure instead. And it turns out that essentially 12 people in the house had higher blood pressure than me, which ironically brought my blood pressure down. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was a stressful night. It was a stressful night. <laughs> Do you do exercise? Are you, are you exercise driven? I used to be quite good at exercise. Like, I've got very sporty mates and stuff. But then, like, fried chicken. <laughs> it's a big thing. And you can order it any time, day or night. Uber Eats, Deliveroo's. Yeah. Someone, uncle, calls you and says, we've got spare wings, shall I drop it around? I'm like, yeah, cool, drop it, <laughs> drop it around. But I, I think you look like you've lost weight since no, we worked together. Well. You look good, man. No, but I haven't been doing exercise, so what does that mean? Oh, hang on. When you said you work together, because people yeah. won't know this, you have worked together before, haven't you? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you where they've worked together before. Now, I'm not, I don't want to say this in a way that kind of typecasts Gus. Uh, but <laughs> Gus, it, it was a Walker's crisp advert, and he wouldn't give anyone any crisps. <laughs> 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 So for you, you would have done, that was been quite at the early part of your career, really. Yeah. So that's a massive opportunity, you wanna? It's, it's it's huge, and like still to this day, something my family regard as the pinnacle of my career. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't care about no BAFTA nominations, mate. <laughs> they don't care about no tours. They're like crisps, very good. <laughs> Are you a fan? Did they, they, they figure well in your life? You don't, you don't have to fib, cos I'm sitting here. I won't be offended. No, listen, this is why it's not going to be favourable in the streets, mm -hmm. but massive fan, bro. I was shaking all <laughs> kinds of my tits left, right and centre to the songs when I was young. <laughs> they, were, they were buying the songs, weren't they? Who's your favourite Spice Girl? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> all the Spice Girls. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't pick one, could you? I feel just, the same. There's too much skill. There's yeah, too much yeah, skill yeah. On, on show. I can't, I can't yeah. pick. i tell you what was funny, though. I made one mistake. I think it was Emma who said, so, Gus, who's your favourite comedian of all time? And I was like, I think the one that had the most influence on me... I remember. Who's the funniest. I remember, I said it loud as well. I said it loud, I was like, Eddie Murphy. And as soon as I said Eddie Murphy, Scary Fights came in, BOW! <laughs> <laughs> so, really, came out the door. She gone flying out the door. And I'd forgotten, obviously, that's... Baby Daddy situation. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and she was really cool about it. She was really funny. She goes, yeah, he's really funny. Yeah. Not bad, but really funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's been said about all of us. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for you, man, like, you, you, you're coming from this situation where everyone's always got to refer to you, back to the Spice Girls, and, it, and, it, and it's a great thing to refer back to. 
but obviously your career's gone in all different directions. And this new step that you're taking, this, this contemporary dance. I was approached by Sadler's Wells about doing a new piece with me in it. And, and I just couldn't say no. It's, it's kind of something I never expected I'd have the opportunity. And it's, it's a lot. I've been training since March last year. That, that you've been training that long? Yeah, When yeah. does it start? I, um, we open on the 19th of January. Yeah. And I think there's about nine shows. We close on the 29th. And, you know, when I hit the stage, I will be 49 years old. So I feel quite proud of myself that I'm taking on this new challenge. I think for me, I've had to make peace with my mature body because it, it doesn't do and it won't do what it did that it, in my 20s, right? But that's okay. The, the beautiful thing about contemporary is it's expressing yourself yeah. with your body. Yeah, but you're fit, you're fit. Like, I'm, I've reached a point in my life <laughs> where there's things now I just won't do. Like, I, if I go into someone's house and there's a beanbag, I'm not even <laughs> going to sit on <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know just what? look at it and think, well, that's for someone under 40. I'm yeah, not going yeah. anywhere near that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. what you've got to be looking at. <laughs> anyway, join us after the break for more with Mel and Gus. See you in a... to the John Bishop Show. I'm here with Mel C and Gus Carr. <laughs> Obviously, there's another big story that's broke this week. I don't know if anyone's heard about it, but apparently Prince Harry's written a book. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? There's been a build-up to this book coming out. The royal family have been sweating about it for ages. Obviously, apart from Prince Andrew. <laughs> You know, a lot of people have said that, you know, maybe it's wrong to talk about your family, although I can't comment cos I've built a career on it. <laughs> although what has happened has been unbelievable. There's a big revelation that he's had a fight with his brother. I mean, listen, I've got a brother. Who hasn't had a fight with his brother? But this is a particular fight, cos this is definitely a posh brother's fight. <laughs> cos what he said is he broke me necklace and I fell into the dog bowl. I mean... <laughs> fight with our Eddie and I tell me mates about the fight with our Eddie, he'll say, have you got a black eye, have you got a fat lip? I don't turn around and go, oh, the beads were everywhere and I had pedigree <laughs> tongue in my head. <laughs> the other thing that he said, which is bonkers, I can't believe he's revealed it, is that he took cocaine whilst on a shooting weekend. <laughs> now, just to let everybody know at home, the last thing that you need when you've got a gun is the false confidence of cocaine. <laughs> and he also revealed to everybody that he lost his virginity at 17 with an older lady outside the pub. Again, that's a massive detail that I never thought you needed to reveal. I've never, ever mentioned about when I lost my virginity, but I will now, to be honest with you. <laughs> I lost my virginity when I was 16. Yeah, I did. Although, to be honest, I found it again when I got married. <laughs> now, from one Harry who split the country in half to one Harry who's forever popular, please welcome Harry Hill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> welcome. Uh, That thing about, uh, when I heard about, you know, Harry losing his virginity to an older lady, I thought, Christ, it's not Camilla, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Harry... I'm not no. the only one who thought that, surely. <laughs> she, but, she, you know what she... I mean, she... Have you met... Have you ever met the Queen Consul? I haven't fought Camilla. No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that. I've met her! Yeah. Have you met her? Well, I met her at that Royal Variety thing, and she... Yeah. she she said to me, she, I felt that she was coming on to me a bit. <laughs> she, I, did, I have to say, she said, it's, uh, she said it was very funny. Do you fancy a bath? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But you know, you've 
were talking there about Harry revealing things in his autobiography. You've written an autobiography, haven't you? Yes, I have. Uh, yeah. which, uh, I think everyone did, because there was no other work during lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> but well, you've written one uh, called Fight, haven't I? And you wrote one called yeah. Who, Who I, I Am. am yeah. uh, you haven't written one yet. Have you, has anyone asked you to? Or have you thought about it? No one's asked me shit. I'm just still really <laughs> distracted by. Did Auntie really ask you to have a bath with her? No. <laughs> <laughs> She pushed me back and I, I just caught myself on the dog bowl. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's hard though when, you, when you're doing anything about yourself. Like a man like Mo Bean, everybody, even I've, I've watched that, thinking that's your life or an extension <laughs> of it. I mean, I'm not trying to go to prison because he sells drugs, but yeah. there's elements. <laughs> but definitely, like, you're, you're, I think your art sounds a bit... This is going to sound fancy. I don't even know why I'm saying it. I Please. think I've heard someone else say it. Your, your, your art should reflect your life. Yeah. yeah. But essentially, and the, the way we ended up making this show is that um, someone found us and, and they said, would you like to make something? And then from there, it's like, well, we've never really seen ourselves on TV, like working class West Midlanders, Brummy specifically. We just told the truth of our lives, our friends' lives. When you have the real life stuff that Mobian goes through, to hit it with a punchline at the end is reflective yeah. of real life. You know, people who are involved in crimes and criminality and stuff, it's not all gang, bang, 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 trilly, trilly. Not gang, bang, that didn't sound right, but... <laughs> bang. <laughs> no, all bang, bang, trilly, trilly. Yeah. It's, there's levity and fun yeah. and love. But it's funny that, that you say that when you talk. You're almost embarrassed then to say, you're ass. There shouldn't be anything about, you know, contemporary dance is a way of expressing yeah. yourself. You're ass a way of expressing yourself. Your wacky comedy is a way of expressing yourself. But you've got to find your groove and be brave enough to stick to it. I don't I, think you have any choice. If you're a comedian, you don't have any choice about what, what you do, really. You can only do what you find funny. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, what you do, I couldn't never do what you do. Because you don't find it funny. I don't <laughs> find it funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would get away with it. But in music, it feels, in some respects, you can be managed away from what you like. You know, you answered an advert to be in a guild band and then you had to fight for your own voice to be heard. Yeah, and I, I think as well, you know, it's all art, isn't it, the, this expressing yourself. I know for myself, I was kind of trying to figure out who I was at the same time, so I, I you tried... You were so young, that's the difference. Lots of different yeah. things, yeah. yeah. And you know what, in life, sometimes you're this. And then later on, you're that. You know, we, we often well, kind but this of is, evolve. I mean, the thing I was saying before with Rishi Sunak and the mats and saying that's the most important for the country, to learn more mats. And you think, no, it's to learn this ability for you to identify who you are, regardless of your, your whatever background that you've come from, because there's a chance that you, that passion can become a job. Yeah. But I think what's really important about the arts as well is it can be, like, really cathartic. You know, finding a way to express yourself. You know, we have a mental health epidemic mm. as well. And, you know, even, like, dancing, it's something I've not done for years and I'm petrified to get back on stage and do it, but I get so much pleasure from it because I'm able to just get so much emotion out. Yeah. And, you know, if, if people can do that in whatever way works for them, it's definitely more important than maths, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, yeah! yeah. <laughs> Now, you're, you're, you're on tour now. You're talking about right this now. thing about being a comedian, <laughs> yeah. finding what finds you funny. It's this is your there, first man. tour in a number of years, isn't it? I ten was... years. I haven't toured for ten years, John. Ten years? I know. So what's it like? How are you finding it? You're enjoying it? It's changed a lot, I think. The hotels, there's no-one in the, running the hotels anymore. <laughs> when you get to the... Because, the, you know, with Brexit, there's everyone's no been sent anyway. home. <laughs> you can't get any... You know, you get a cheese toasty, the porter makes you a, a cheese toasty. Toast, you know, everyone goes home after about half past six. <laughs> 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 the whole country just looked at the telly and went, oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get a cheese toasty. You really? can't. You cannot get a cheese toasty yeah. after about half past nine. We've got a cost of living crisis. <laughs> <laughs> and there used to be a thing that sustained me on tour, which was the uh, Ginster's Brunch Bar. I don't know if anyone remembers this, but it was like, uh, it was like meat, like a meat tube stuffed with um, coleslaw. Uh, you're watching ITV, by the way. Um, <laughs> this is not a dream. 
And then the whole thing was enrobed in uh, breadcrumbs. Ginster's brunch bar? Yeah, the Ginster's brunch bar. Very different generation, you know what I mean? Forget it. Move you can on. still get the, the, the pasties and the, and the uh, scotch eggs. But this was... <laughs> this was something very different, Gus. This, uh... <laughs> It's kind of filled you up no, I need to, I need in to a way you, that the... In a different way, it hit the spot yeah, in a different yeah, way. Yeah, yeah it, it, it wasn't just food that filled you up, it took away some of the loneliness of touring. <laughs> <laughs> well, just for the sake of balance, there's not just Ginsters, there's other shit food you can eat as well. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, it was described as a one-man variety show. I mean, that's a bit extreme. But I have got a dance in it, Mel. Have you? A dance? I have, yeah. Oh, uh, do, do we want to see uh, the dance? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we have, well, we have. Oh, come on! Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I've set myself up. You, off, you offered it. I've, I've, I've set myself. So, well, we haven't got the music, have we? So we just need a. Thanks for tuning in. That's all we've got time for. <laughs> it's better with the music. You said a dance or two. You've got to, you've got to wiggle a little bit. <laughs> you put some proper effort into yeah, that. Yeah, I've got a choreographer. Really? Yeah. You've got a choreographer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so join me after the break. We'll have more chat with Harry, Gus and Mel. See you in a bit. John Bishop Show. I'm here with Mel C, Gus Garn and Harry Hill. <laughs> it's only been a week in January, but we've got some fantastic quotes of the week, so we're going to play Quote of the Week. <laughs> you've got cards. What I need you to do when I come to you is to read the quote that's on the card. These are all quotes based on what's happening in the news this week. So we'll start with you, Harry. Yeah. She treated me like a young stallion. Ooh. She treated me like a young stallion. Do either of you know where that's come from? Yeah, Camilla at that thing. What about you? Bastion. Yeah. She was all over me like the last. <laughs> that, that... I, I, do you know what? I think you're close, but I think it's a different member of the royal family. I think that's in Prince Harry's book. It is. It is. Prince yeah. Harry, I can tell you that that quote's from Prince Harry's up and coming memoir, Spare, where he recounts the moments he lost. Yes, yeah, Spare. <laughs> he recounts the moments he lost his virginity, right? At 17, to an older woman in a pub who was a horsey woman. And you just... I wondered what you were going to say you... then. Come on, I know. And she treated him like a young stallion. I was just... Oh, really not funny. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, quote two. Uh, Mel, you've got the next one. Oh, OK. Um, it's the first time I've ever seen one. It's huge. <laughs> it could be the same topic. <laughs> Rishi Sunak's wife uh, getting a tax bill. <laughs> 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 Could it be that? It's that time of year. It's that time of year. <laughs> this is a lovely story. This is a quote from BBC Yorkshire News about Thor, the walrus. Oh, the walrus. Yeah. And, he, and he made the headlines this week because he, he came into the harbour at Scarborough over New Year's Eve and then he stopped for a rest of Bly before he went back, we presume, into the, into the North Sea. But what was lovely about it is it became a bit of a, of a tourist attraction or a community attraction. So Scarborough Council cancelled the fireworks on New Year's Eve because yeah. they didn't want to scare yeah. them. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'm unusual, but I something about a walrus uh, witnessing fireworks for the first time is, is something I'd quite like to see. Maybe... <laughs> is that wrong? You are it right. Like... Scarborough Council have decided it doesn't like fireworks. Maybe that's why he came. 
And he's got... Oh, shit, the here, there's no fireworks! <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back to Norway. <laughs> so, Gus, yes, what's mate. the next one? It's not the end of my career to come to South Africa. Uh, it can't be Nelson Mandela, cos he died. Uh, he's <laughs> no, it goes, um, I'm telling you, if you haven't got it straight away, you'll never get it. And the reason being, it was Cristiano Ronaldo. Right. We'll play you the clip in which he said it. It's not easy to win any games today because the teams, they are prepared, the football, it's different, the evolution of football is different. So, for me, it's not, it's not the end of my career to come in South Africa. Oh. But he's not in South well, Africa. The important <laughs> thing is that he's getting paid £172 million a year to play in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's there. Giving a press conference saying he's in South Africa. I'm, like, I'm in a pants at the moment. I felt like screaming, it's behind you! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Very good. I mean, but the mad thing about it, £172 million a year, like, you've got enough dough to dress well. He looks like an estate agent, doesn't he? <laughs> he's walking around going, where are the giraffes? <laughs> <laughs> I was promised giraffes. <laughs> 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 so, anyway, Mel. <laughs> All right, do you need another one? OK. I could have him. I could have him? Mm. I think you said it in a gentle way. It should have been a bit more like, I could have him. Oh, right. So oh. That's not really my personality. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I could have him. I could have him. could have him. Who do you think it is? We're not back on the Prince Harry Camilla thing, are we? <laughs> no, this, believe it or not, is London Mayor Sadiq Khan when he was asked if he would challenge Boris Johnson to a boxing match. <laughs> Yo, I would, pay, I would pay to see that. Oh, yeah. man, no, I would I pay to see it. Too for that. No, I wouldn't pay to see it. <laughs> I'd pay to have Boris Johnson in a boxing match myself. <laughs> Don't sit on the fence, John. <laughs> right, what's the next quote? Quote, this is you, this is the last one. So the last one is, email me at smalldickenergy at getalife.com. That's not my email address. It says, email me <laughs> at smalldickenergy at getalife.com. I think I know this one. Yeah, it's Go the... Go on, who, who do you think? It's the Gretty, Greta Thunberg... Yeah. Um, who's the bloke? Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate. Uh, Greta Thunberg came back with one of the greatest comebacks in, in, in uh, Twitter history. Uh, her tweet is now the fourth most liked tweet in Twitter history ever. And what happened? Uh, there's this uh, knobhead called Andrew Tate, <laughs> uh, who's a self-confessed misogynist, and he sent her a tweet saying, look, Greta, I've got loads of cars. Uh, do, send me your email address and I'll tell you how much my carbon emissions are. So then she replied with this, uh, yes, please, do enlighten me. Email me at smalldickenergygetalife.com. <laughs> <laughs> so finish. This story gets even better. So then Andrew Tate then replied with this. So he sent that, and it was a little video message, right? And he sat there having a cigar and all the rest of it. And one of the things that he did during the video message, he said, bring me the pizza boxes over because I'm not going to recycle them. The next thing that happened is he ends up getting arrested shortly after this week for the horrible crime of human trafficking. Based primarily, people are saying, on this tweet because it says Jerry's Pizza and it's written in Romanian, so that's how Interpol found out where he was, allegedly. And I have to be honest with you, if that's the case, Interpol is shit. <laughs> I mean, he looks like your dad on Boxing Day with his new dressing gown, doesn't he? <laughs> but the best thing about it is Greta then sent this tweet. This is what happens when you don't need that green pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all we've got time for tonight. Thank you for my fantastic <laughs> guest, Mel C. Close down that here. <laughs> and remember, if you are going to throw celebrities, check where your pizza boxes come from. See you soon. Good night and God bless. <laughs>